here, so I'll get started. Got it. All right, welcome everybody to the December 1st uh, Chaos DEI Working Group meeting. Uh, a couple things today. So just a note, I'll share my screen. Um, we do have one more meeting after this. So we have this meeting and then next Wednesday is gonna be our last meeting. And then the chaos project is just kind of taking a general, <clears throat> you know, month off during the holiday season. So would anybody like to facilitate next week's last and final meeting of 2021? Any takers? Yeah, yeah next week for academics is Oh, I can do it. Um, I, I I hope we can make it super casual and just kind of talk about how we're doing. Yeah, that's the thing that's I can totally do. Totally fine. Totally fine. Uh, thank you, Matt. So we did last week. We had spent a little bit of time on the well, I think a fair amount of time on board council diversity. So this is again part of the process of. Uh, just reflecting on metrics that we have released prior and um, just updating these metrics and then re-releasing them uh, in the regular release cycle. So I thought we could maybe spend a little bit of time taking a look at, at the metric as it stands now. I went ahead and, and kind of worked through the changes that we had last week. So it's a clean document again at this point. But would everybody be okay taking maybe another look at at board council diversity? Yeah. Right on. So the first link is what is the currently released metric. And the second link down here is the link to the Google Doc uh, that we have. So if we could take maybe you know 10 minutes and just go through the document, I think usually they seem to take about two rounds to to kind of clean up um, and we had one round last week so maybe we could wrap it up this week all right so i will pause the recording if i can figure out how to do that and shop stop my sharing all right welcome back so we've been editing this document and we learned that in if it is an enormous winged <laughs> demon creature it's the orange editing. thing at the top. Right there. I had to look it up. I never even heard that term. A <laughs> um, couple, does anybody want to make any any comments on, on the edits that they did, things that they were trying to accomplish in those edits? Do most people think most of the edits were just kind of like, I don't know. Just expressing what was already in the document in, in slightly more and uh, better ways? Or was there anything new that was added? Okay, thumbs up. Just expressing what was in there in better ways. Okay. I, I did add um, a sentence about intersectionality. So I don't know I if that, that fits or not. I feel like it's important to bring up because I don't know. I think it's something to be aware of that, like, you. You know, you may be diverse in one area, but not diverse at all in another area. So, yeah. No, I thought that was a good addition. And, um, it's and the, the other, yeah. Sorry, the other thing I added was um, about uh, I, this sentence right here as well. Electing normalizes. Does that make sense? The way I said it, I couldn't really put it into good words. I don't think. Let's see. I think that makes a lot of sense. Like it's it's sending a message not just to those who are being represented, but to the whole community that um, you know they belong there. They yep. belong in the I community. Think that's good. Yep. Okay. Um, Matt, is this still? Oh, he went away. Wondering if this is still an outstanding comment. Um, I, this this was one thing that I wanted to bring up. So elections typically do not ensure that people from diverse backgrounds are represented. I, 
it seemed it may be true it may not be true <laughs> it seemed like a either reference did anybody have a comment on that? So like we could observe whether open elections are held and determine, I agree with that. Like if the candidates are representative of the community, but I was a little unsure of that note. I think it needs more context uh, and probably some kind of backing reference. Okay. Could we take it out? Okay. I'm going to propose to take it out. Um, this, let's see, what will this look like on, in Markdown? Observe the diversity of governing board members from the project webpage limitation. Oh, oh, I got it. That it's not always like self up or, um, it's not always observable. From web pages. Something like that. Is that good? Yeah, cool. All right, great. Um, there was a comment from Matt and Lauren who both asked about perhaps a diversity report for a governing board. <clears throat> Has anybody ever, I think the, the request was, does <laughs> ultimately I read it? Yeah, is there some sort of guide out there? Elizabeth, do you know anything out there? I was just gonna do a quick search. I feel like I've seen it, but I can't place it. So I'm just gonna do a quick search and just see. Okay. Uh, yeah, like like how you would go about generating such a report, that would be interesting. I mean, was this is this supposed to be a diverse report of just the governing board or of the whole community? I thought just the governing board, just because that's what this is all about. That's what I thought too. Yeah. So I've only seen, I think, well, I don't know. I need to Google because I, I don't remember. My brain is not good. I'm like, I've definitely seen diversity reports of the whole community, which are a big deal to do, but that's okay. totally really different than what we're looking for here. Now, does it have to be a report? Can it just be the diversity statistics? Uh, yeah, hold on. Yes, I think that's, yeah, and a report does sound fairly, fairly uh, involved, if that's kind of where you're going with that, Matt. Yeah, when I hear a report, I think we're going to have to make a whole new tool for that. <laughs> so request like it, like. Um... Demographic information. Diversity data. Yeah. Diversity information. Matt, what was your do you, now that you're you know what your need a reference for open elections what that was about? Yeah, I think it'd be helpful to contextualize what we want, what we mean by open elections, because that can mean different things in different places. Okay. So this is not really weather. So this is like how. What if we just said instead of open, like what about that, Matt? Does that help? 
Yeah, that worked. Okay. All right. Um, let's just check that out. Oh, Matt, while you're here, you had a comment on community itself. Yeah, we, we talk about other areas such as technical leaders or the community itself, which seems to encapsulate a lot of what we're talking about. Okay, so like maybe, I think the, the point here is like technical leads so like you would have a group of technical leads or or just contributors um i'm guessing sean wrote this so i'm guessing yeah i was just trying to make like it yeah i was just trying to make it more clear i'm guessing matt this is like um so we have the governing board which is the group of people and then we would have like the project maintainers which are people that have rights to merge and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's kind of a different collection of people. Okay. So we can just take mm -hmm. out the community itself section. We don't really okay. have to replace it with anything. There's just a suggestion for that. What if we said like technical leads or event organizers like that? Okay. That works. You know what I mean? Like just different groups yeah. of people that kind of, okay, great. All right, look at that, it's looking good. <laughs> I was gonna get rid of that too. Uh, all right, what do y'all think? Looking solid. Yeah. We hit the 30 minute mark. We had we liked that one. That's great. All right, so this is looking looking pretty good. All right, so we need to. Get this. I'm always um, back out for public review. And Elizabeth, if you can find anything, just add it here. Okay. All right, I can okay, okay, great. All right, well, thank you everybody for that. That's wonderful. Um, am I are we recording again? We are. Uh, all right, so then a few few other things I just wanted to let you know that in the last um community call and the asia pacific call a little bit earlier today we talked about goals for 2022 and i think it's also um worth kind of asking each of the working groups if there are things that, that the working group would maybe like to to take on in 2022 um somebody's putting in kind of the dei related goals i think in here, so thanks for whoever's doing that. That looks like. So, is there anything? Actually, Matt, I I had tried. Well, I had also I'd cleaned up this list a little bit for the Asia Pacific call, but this is great. Um, is there anything that? And actually, one of the things that came up in the Asia Pacific call that I think touches diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, is building stronger relationships. Oh, actually, we can bring this up. So one was building stronger relationships with different geographic regions across the globe. And we had talked about 
the potential to have an official title or official recognition for kind of leads in these different geographic regions. So for example, in China, having an individual who is kind of the lead for the efforts that are occurring in China with respect to chaos. And there are a variety of reasons to do this. Um, kind of a, a two-way street. One is that, you know, there's an individual who we as a community here located in the U.S. can kind of talk to to find out how things are going and what the efforts are in, say, China, in this case, Asia Pacific region, um, but also kind of identify somebody who is comfortable asking for resources from the project kind of at large. You know, so I think there could be concerns about like, can I have money? Can I have access to, can I ask questions to the Linux Foundation with respect to event management? So kind of this, this bi-directional thing. So I don't know what people's thoughts are on one, improving geographic reach of the chaos project. I'm sure everybody's completely fine with that. Uh, but having like official people appointed or recognized for the work that they're doing in these other regions. And we'd, it'd be like an official like badge or something along those lines. We haven't really thought it out too hard, but do people have a reaction to that? I support that 100%. Okay. Which is what I would have said in the Asia Pacific call of my yeah. life. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Your yeah, microphone yeah. was broken back then. And also, it, it related, I think we could also do the same kind of thing for other uh, groups, such as like the, I was just thinking about like the operations team, like mm -hmm. kind of giving them a little bit more of a like visible, and maybe even we have a page on the website that's like, here's who we are. And it has like a headshot and like, what they work on or something like that, like um, to not right. just represent the, the, I really like this geographical one for sure, but you know, other areas as well. So just a thought. I like that. that. And I like it because right now the only images and even small bios are for the board, which is kind of this, I don't know, sometimes I, I know that we're, that we just talked about the board council diversity metric, but, and part of it is, making it observable that there's a path to leadership, but sometimes even a board or a council probably seems pretty distant <laughs> for new, for newcomers, <laughs> like the, the gap is pretty large. Um, and this would recognize um, things that are not that, or people who are not involved in the board, that those types of efforts. Okay, great. Matt or Kafai or Lauren, I don't know if you even understand what we're talking about, but so the idea here is that if if we're going to expand, not expand, but recognize the work that's occurring in China with respect to the chaos project, right now it's kind of just an ad hoc collection of people that we have a designated individual who's recognized by the chaos project as, you know, Asia Pacific community, chaos community lead or something like that. And that individual is recognized on the website and they have, you know, maintainership privileges, they have on GitHub and on Slack, they have the ability to communicate with me or Elizabeth, like to request funds, if they have questions to the Linux Foundation to like attach an ancillary event to an event, like they're comfortable asking those kinds of questions. Does that make more sense? So <laughs> I'm a little worried about that the lead and the um, communication with the rest of chaos being on one person. What if what if we did a lead? Uh, this is something to bring up with them, of course. But what if we do like a lead position and then also a liaison position, and they coordinate together, kind of split up the job, especially when it's on like yeah. a volunteer basis. Yeah, I mean that'd be fine. I have no problem like having a couple people involved. But just the hope is is that we can just at least start recognizing people for the consistent and good work that they're doing in these different regions. Um, and kind of provide more access to things that they might need. So for example, like when when Shoya is setting up the, the chaos 
um, meetups in China. Like there, there are certain things that she might need, right? And I just want to make sure that that in that role she's comfortable asking us if it's money, <laughs> if it's if it's t-shirts, if it's event space, whatever it might be, that we're happy to help as well. And that that an individual in that spot would know that they're they're able to ask those kinds of questions. Okay, great. Um, and so I also think in 2022, Matt, you had asked for um, kind of what the list of things that came out of the reflection were yesterday. And he, here is that list of things to think about in the CAS project, certainly not fully comprehensive, but this is what came from the, from the reflection. And so I think the goal in 2022 is this is this. <laughs> so to start implementing these things. And you can see we've been doing a number of these already. So for example, the Chinese translations of metrics was a recommendation that came out of that reflection. So some of them we were able to do in parallel and some I think we'll have to start um, in 2022. This is an awesome list. I like this. Cool. And you can see like, like a lot of these too, are like, I don't know, onboarding office hours, getting started. Like that's also, <laughs> that's tied up in here as well. Yeah. You know, so a lot of the things that even came up in the meeting yesterday were actually recommendations that came. And like I've been saying in the, the meeting yesterday in the Asia Pacific call today, it's been really interesting asking for these goals that a lot of them are focused on, um, lowering the barriers to entry to the chaos project and also helping with the dissemination of the material from the chaos project so kind of efforts to to improve how the work of chaos uh, finds a home in the world that isn't just our community uh, and then also lowering those barriers to entry so i i thought that was great it seems like a i don't know like a growing up for the project <laughs> you know things to think about that are a little bit different than just building metrics. All right. What did we, yeah, we already did these, didn't we? Somebody put checks on there. I right, was the one on travel support for speakers, just in case it's different from diversity access tickets. I think it might be, but we have a lot to do yet. And I'm kind of excited for. Yeah. And these all seem fairly reasonable, don't they? Like this has actually been developed at this point. We haven't a survey. We just haven't put it out yet. There yet. Inclusive naming. Yes, this does need attention. <laughs> Needs to be sorted out. Um, yeah, half done. So cool. All right. So that's that's about it for today. Yeah. We got through board council diversity, which is great. Wanted to show you some of the goals that came up and. These are the recommendations that came from the reflection. I've got one question. Yeah, sure. Um, for the badging, project badging, uh -huh. I was under—I I was understanding that we weren't going to be focusing on project badging because All In is doing that. Is it something completely different? No. So thanks for that question. So um, I had talked to to folks in the All In project and as the project the all in for maintainers part gets rolling i think in 2022 there is going to be probably a, a push to think about how we can recognize the dei work that projects are doing um, so the conversations have i've i've been really hesitant that project badging I don't think it can work the same way project event badging works or event badging works. I yeah, just don't think they, just, they scale the same. No, it's a, yeah, it's a really very different enterprise. Events are far less numerous than projects. And, yeah, and they're time bounded. Yeah. I mean, they have a couple like really big advantages over projects from a badging perspective. In terms of, yes, actually being able to badge them. Yeah. This kind of leads me to my second question is that we, uh, I see the Linux Foundation uses a provider for badges. 
like Credly is their example. Yeah. And that seems yeah. to work really well for the integrations that they use it for. I, I'd like to see if we can, for a goal for 2022 is try and find a badge provider because we just can't provide that ourselves unless we have our own server. For projects, running. For, 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 projects. for projects and events. Um, you can provide permanent badges or time bound badges with a lot of the like kind of backpacks that they that they make. Uh, it's something I'd so, like to look into. What is that? Could you explain what that means? So, like, would the review process still be the same for events? Yeah, yeah. You just it, it, oh, we okay. just use some kind of API to provide the badge, and then it would I, it would link back to the issue. It would also be um, limited to where you can put it, and we'd get the web page you want to put it on. It'd be I, a little more process, but it's a lot safer and more secure that way. I gotcha. Okay, so essentially our process would kind of look the same through yeah. GitHub, but the issuing of the badge would be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And we can still build that into the bot that we use right now. Okay, yeah, I certainly wouldn't stop you from taking a look at that, that seems to me. And I think that's a good idea too, because to your point, if the Linux Foundation is using, what is it, Credly? Credly, they, um, they have a badge that, I got a speaker badge from going to open source summit and speaking, and it was actually yeah. pretty snazzy how they how they put it together. Okay. Uh, okay, great. Well, that sounds good. And then I think with all in for maintainers for project badges, we're going to have to find some new program that's somewhere in between the level of effort that event badging is and the like self certification by a project. You know, yeah. it just says, yep, I'm doing all these things. <laughs> Give me a badge. So, because <laughs> that's not usually how it is around DEI. Um, but I, I do think, Matt, that to your original question, yes, All In is doing this. So I think the conversation would include the All In group as well. So it wouldn't just be here in the Chaos Project. I mean, All In, is that under the umbrella of Chaos or is it a whole different thing? Okay. A whole different thing. So we can't use github.com slash badging, sadly, <laughs> for the all in. But I, sorry, I, I'm so partial. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> so cool. Good question. Thank you. All right. Well, everybody, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, whatever you might be doing today, grading papers, taking tests, <laughs> writing papers, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, everybody, take care, and we'll see you at the next whatever. All right, see you at the next whatever. See you bye. next. Yeah. All right, bye. 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 <laughs>